We are here with the head football coach of Normal Community Ironman, Jason Drengwitz, uh, coming off an impressive first round victory over West Chicago. Coach, your overall impressions of that first round IHSA playoff victory? Yeah, you know, that first one, that first round is always, you have a little bit of anxiety and anxiousness and nervousness and not know really what to expect. Uh, really proud of our kids. I thought, I'm proud of our kids, proud of our coaches, our seniors. <clears throat> Felt like we had a really good week of practice. Uh, felt like we it was a very complimentary win. I felt like defense had a big, had a big play in it, offensively explosive, and and special teams found ways to make plays. <clears throat> I think anytime, as you guys know, anytime all three phases can tr contribute points or big plays to a game, it typically lends itself to being pretty successful. So it's a good night for us. We were able to uh, get on them early. Uh, defense settled in after after a while, which we knew was going to take some time. And able to get the points up to you know get to a 41 nothing running clock early in the third quarter. So happy about that. Uh, still areas we got to improve on to get better. And we're definitely going to do this, uh, do that for this week as we have a big challenge in front of us. We had talked about before West Chicago dealing with a new offense you had maybe not seen yeah. before this season. Talk about how your defense maybe did with some assignment football and kind of playing that out. Yeah, I think we knew there was going to be some time to get adjusted to their speed and how well they get off the ball and. Um, it took us a little bit of time, I think, to, to get adjusted to that. We missed a couple of assignments early, but then once we got about, you know, two series, three series, and I felt like we really settled in and were assignment sound. And they got into doing some things they typically don't do in the passing game, which we knew made us feel good. Uh, really impressed by them offensively and their coaching staff. Their quarterback, number two, was a really good player. And number one's a really good player, 77. Their, uh, their best alignment is one of the best alignment we've seen all year long. And... Um, but was happy with how the defense was able to execute the game plan, really not allow them uh, to make a lot of really, really big plays and to keep them out of the end zone for the majority of the game was a big deal. Yeah, if we look kind of at the offensive <coughs> end of things, Mark Gary had 100 all-purpose yards and Kyle Beatty was near perfect, throwing 12 for 14. Um, talk about their connection and what the passing game needs to continue to do in the postseason and also maybe what they can improve on as well. Well, I think... You know, those guys have been thrown to each other, you know, on Friday nights for, for, for basically three years now, and I think they continue to get better. Uh, a lot of the things that we do offensively, especially in the past game, are also around trying to get Marquand the football, uh, and Kyle knows that. Marquand's done a really good job of improving his skills as a route runner. Uh, Kyle, I think, is playing some of his best football right now at the end of the year, which is really, really good. And in order for us to continue to be successful, we're going to have to continue doing those things. We're going to have to be really attention to detail oriented uh, on our routes, uh, do a great job in making our reads, uh, put the ball in the right spots, knowing when to throw it away, when to run it. Uh, but hopefully that's something they can continue to do. I thought Marquand uh, had a really good night, uh, not only catching the ball, but running the ball. And then we're asking a lot of him. He's returning the kicks. He's uh, starting wide receiver. He's playing almost every snap in our away corner so he's doing a really good job in all those phases and really has conditioned himself into the ability to play a whole game. Uh, Kyle continues to you know I think do all the things that we need him to do to win football games uh, but all those are going to be you know the later you go in the postseason the, the better you got to play and the higher level you got to execute at. Yeah you talk about Marquand playing on both sides of the ball um, I know Kalen plays on both sides of the ball. Can you kind of just talk about how once you enter the playoffs, you start to see some new plays. You start to see players playing on both sides <coughs> of the ball a little bit more. Um, what impact do those players have when they're able to play on both sides of the ball and be really successful? Well, I think if you want to talk about that, you have to go back almost like five, six years ago, and we decided as a program to start cross-training our guys on offense and defense. Before that, we had been a strictly platoon program where we had guys were on either offense or defense, uh, and we didn't cross over with guys. And we felt like we had gotten into a situation where there were games, big games on the line, and we had some of our best players. We weren't able to use them on the other side of the ball, and so we changed that. And Marquand has played both ways all year, and that kind of started at the end of last year. Kalen has been involving in our depth chart. Uh, as a ro rover, he played a lot against Pure High. We didn't really need him to play there, but in order to win, I think you got to have your best players available to play in all the key moments of the game. And as we progress, you're going to have to really do whatever it takes. And if that is playing a couple guys both ways, uh, you have to do that because you want to find a way to survive in advance. Kalen uh, does. Will, will, he'll see more action defensively this week. Marquand will continue to do what he does. You might see some 
Braden Mazanowski and Reed Johnson on the defensive line at times, but uh, you need your best players to play. You need your best players to play well to advance in the postseason for sure. And then, Coach, as you kind of move into 7A, bigger schools, <coughs> um, how much platoon versus getting your best players on the field, how much do you see that from other teams? How many of those big schools are strictly platoon systems most of the time? I think it just depends. Like West Chicago had like, Almost all their skill guys play both ways. Prospect this week doesn't hardly have any. They don't really have anybody that's playing both mm -hmm. ways. They're full platoon. They may be cross training their guys, uh, but even when you go back and look at teams that we've played in the past, Downers Grove North, some of their key players played safety and DB and running back, O line, D lineman. Uh, there's years when St. Charles North, Tyler Newbin, mm -hmm. who was playing for the Giants in the NFL. He played running back, wide receiver, defensive back. Um, you're going to see some that do a lot of it, some that do, don't do much of it. It just all depends on who they are. But uh, you're going to see uh, teams play their best players uh, if need be in order to find ways to win. And we want to be able to do the same thing if need be. Yeah, looking at prospects, you know, last week against West Chicago, it was a really run-heavy offense. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Prospect is pretty balanced mm -hmm. in that way. Their quarterback's thrown for 22 touchdowns, but they're also their star uh, running back has 19 rushing touchdowns on the season. So can you talk about how your defense is going to have to be ready in both aspects of the game? I think the first thing we have to be ready for is their tempo. They play at a really fast tempo. They don't uh, run a ton of formations. They run probably five or six formations, but they're able to go really fast. And we have, we have to be able to handle that and get lined up and lined up appropriately, get our calls made when they're going fast. Uh, pass game, uh, the, the, the quarterback's really good. The receivers run really, really good routes. They're talented. They're fast. they got speed. So we got to be locked in coverage-wise. And then their running back is, is outstanding. He's big. He's physical. He's fast. Runs well between the tackles. And they block well up front. So anytime you play a team that is good run and pass that presents some challenges. You know, we would like to be able to get some pressure on the quarterback and get some hits, try to get in his face, because just like most quarterbacks, when you can get them on the move, out of rhythm, uh, sometimes they'll make decisions, but he's still really good. Uh, but anything like run game wise, you want to try to find ways always to make teams one dimensional. If you can make them, you know, shut down the round and make them throw more, uh, that would be, I think, ideal. But they're still really good in the passing game. Their quarterback's talented. Their receivers are good. So they present a lot of challenges to us defensively. But I know it's a challenge that we're looking forward to. Looking forward to the opportunity. Yeah, last week, Prospect, they won 56-14 against mm -hmm. Hersey. You know, in the regular season, it was just a three-point victory. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of led to that victory for them? And what challenges will they pose based off of that win? Well, I think if you really look at the game, and I'm not because Prospect and Hersey are both really good. Hersey turned it over six times. Um, two interceptions returned for touchdowns, a fumble inside their own 20, and then additionally, uh, they dropped a, uh, their, their punter dropped a snap on their own five or inside their own five. So anytime, you, really, you give any team six turnovers and a fumble inside the five, it's going to be hard to win those games. And then when you give those opportunities to a team like Prospect with the talent they have and how well coached they are, that's a tough recipe. I would like to think... If, if someone did that for us, we would be in that same boat. Uh, we got to make sure, obviously, that uh, you know we take care of the football, don't turn it over, and give them short fields, make them earn anything they get. Um, and then offensively, we got got to be able to score, and we got to find ways to get our guys, uh, playmakers, get them the ball in space, and try to find ways to take advantage of some of the things that they do. But uh, I think that was a, it's a, that's a rivalry game. Hersey Prospect would probably be similar to us, Bloomington, or us Normal West. So you could tell just watching the films that the emotions are really, really high for be a first round playoff game. Uh, and you know the margin for error in those games gets to be really thin and. When they're as good as Prospect is and how well coached they are, that's uh, that's a tough, uh, you know, tough hill to climb. Turn the ball over six times. Well, for your offense, consistent running game has been a key for you all year. What maybe what is the the key of getting that consistent running game going on Friday night against Prospect? Well, I think we have to be able to handle their front. They're running a front that we really haven't seen since. Kind of similar to what Normal West does. They run a trio, a three-three stack. But they jump in and out of front, so we got to be able to get the front identified, make our line calls right, be able to execute the run game, whatever it may be. I think that's going to be uh, the biggest deal. They're fast, they're athletic, they cause, I feel like they cause chaos, and I don't mean that disrespectfully to them at all, but uh, with their stack, they're bringing pressure, they do some unique things where they back their nose off, put the mic in behind, uh, which could cause confusion. We just got to be really sound and really execute the run game. Uh, 
passing game wise, uh, they're playing a lot of cover one, uh, one free, so they're playing man with a free safety in the middle, a lot of cover two, a lot of two man, so we gotta be able to win one on one matchups, protect Kyle and get the ball to Mark Juan, Michael Reed, Ivo, those guys. So Friday night, what do you want to see from your team? What's at the top of your priority list? I think it'd be similar to what we said in the past, Joe. I think one, I just want to see us again leading up to that. We got to have a really good week of practice. We've had some, you know, adversity this week with the weather. Two, I want to see us being really focused and locked in. If practice has been any sign of how we'll be, it's been really fun to listen to our guys talk and talk football and communicate and stuff like that. Uh, we got to be able to protect Kyle. Uh, and so we can throw the football and get those guys in space. And then defensively, I think we have to make them earn their scores. We cannot allow them to get big plays, quick scores, things like that. Make them drive the field. Um, and then finally, we gotta we gotta find ways to make plays in special teams, whether it's uh, covering kicks because the return guys are really good. They have a, a five-star kicker, a really good kicker. I think he's got like 46 or 49 touchbacks. So I don't know how much kick returns we'll get. So. Um, and, the, and and we got to understand it's, gonna, it's probably going to be a four quarter game, you know, and it's going to be a close game. And getting offensively, getting three yards, four yards, five yards, those those got to be wins. And we got to be able to just methodically move the ball and, and, and not get too impatient with expecting things to happen as quickly as they have in the past because we're, we're playing a different opponent for sure. Well, coach, it's an exciting time of year. How much do you enjoy, or what is the challenge of playing different schools now that you haven't seen before, and maybe the challenge and the enjoyment that comes with that? I think that's been the enjoyment of being in 7A. One of the main things is, if I think you go back the last four or five years, we have not, maybe even since we, we have not played the same team twice. And our paths have been really, really different. So this year we played two teams we've never seen, West Chicago and Mount Prospect. Uh, that, that's really fun. Uh, there is some unknown to that because you might be limited in the amount of film you get trying to base it off two games. I, I'm probably like the least connected high school football coach in the state. I just don't know a lot of people that I can reach out to and get film from. But that also can be good too. Sometimes you get six, seven films and it's kind of like paralysis by analysis and now yeah. you just get, hey, this is what they do. They're really good at it. Let's lock in, put our game plan in and play. Uh, I try to, I tell other people, you know, whether it's Coach Feeney, Coach Witsick, Coach Conovet, hey, make sure you enjoy this time. I need to take that advice too and enjoy this extra time with our players and our coaching staff because not everybody gets it and, and understand that uh, we have a special group that's done a lot of really good things for our program and we just hope we can continue it for, you know, as long as as long as possible. But it's going to require us to continue to practice on and, and execute a high level on Friday. Well, coach, thanks for your time. Good luck Friday night. Awesome. Thanks, Joel. Appreciate everything.